everybody. Welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, Mike Rover 31 Hope everybody had a great Memorial Day weekend. And we have a 13-game slate today, probably one of the biggest ones I've seen in a long time, with no weather issues. There's one game that has about maybe a 10% chance of rain, but other than that, it's going to be a beautiful day for baseball. So we've got lots of pitching, we've got lots of hitting, we've got lots of choices. So let's try to break them down for you and uh, make it a little bit easier on you because this can be pretty overwhelming. So first game, we have Cleveland Guardians and the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Orioles are a 150 favorite here. We have Qual Control and Kyle Gibson. I'm out on both pitchers here. Both of them are pretty low price, which um were decent. But um, I mean, Gibson may be in the cheap range here because Cleveland beyond Ramirez really hasn't done much. But really, like, Quintrell has, like, a, a strikeout rate that's in the teens. Gibson's isn't much better. Uh, Cleveland doesn't strike out that much. And uh, the Orioles can definitely put up some runs, even though probably Cedric Mullen has a lower leg injury and will be out of the lineup. So uh, Cleveland, they're just going to be over in my cheap range here because besides Jose Ramirez, like nobody is really um, too expensive here. You're looking at Quan at 3.9, Rosario at 3.7, Naylor at uh, 3K, Bell, who is, um, you know, can be a switch hitter here at 2.4. So they actually make a, a pretty cheap stack. Uh, there's probably about five other cheap stacks I'd like over them, but uh, definitely, you know, in a 13 game slate, I uh, keep them in mind as a fill in in Baltimore. I think it's my favorite GPP stack here against Quadrille. Um, He is a soft contact hitter or pitcher. So, but I think these guys with power, like Fraser should be a cheap at lead off and then Rushman, Santander, Montcastle, even righty on righty. I'm fine with Henderson's been disappointing, but he can put things up at time. Even Hayes right and righty. I'm fine with, and then the bottom line is probably gonna be all uh, lefties also, whoever they roll out there. Uh, O'Hearn um, from Kansas city. He was decent first baseman back then. If Montcastle sits for some reason, it could be a lefty there at two, two. So uh, lots of options there next game we have is market brewers and toronto blue jays we have hauser and kikuchi hauser again uh, also has a very low strikeout rate not interested in him against this toronto team even though it's mostly right-handed heavy um i think toronto definitely makes a decent hitting stack here uh there's five teams of the five total and toronto is one of them here at 5.24 i'm um, walking on the other side or Kikuchi on the other side, he's been volatile, but that's what you really look want to look for in a GPP. He's my third favorite medium range pitcher here, and I think I'm definitely going to be playing some shares of him because Milwaukee has really struggled against left-handed hitting, and one of the best right-handed bats, Adamas, is in concussion protocol. So this lineup is really watered down now. So that could bode really well for Kikuchi, or maybe he gets blown up. I don't think so. I, I think, you know, I'm looking at even the 4.26 total for Milwaukee I think it's too high so if that's still there I bet the under on that if you um if you do prop betting or uh you know I, I think that's def I don't think they get to that I think Blue Jays bullpen is solid and, and Kikuchi will do enough might give up like two or three runs but I don't know if they get to like the 4.26 um you know they'd have to score five runs to be over that so that might be hard for them today Bat-wise, uh, like I said, I really like Toronto. Probably my fourth, fifth favorite stack here of the ones that are over 5K. And then Milwaukee, just a leverage stack here against Kikuchi. Uh, it's going to be super cheap here with um, Contreras. If you want a one-off for catch, if you want to pay up a little at 3.8, that works. Um, Ruff's pretty much free at, at 2.1 here. I'd skip over Yelich, Brian Anderson, Briseyu. And Miller, I mean, this is a dirt cheap stack. So if you're trying to get some of like Atlanta or Dodgers in and, you know, or you want to pay up for both pitchers, then I mean, this potentially could be something in GPP to look at, but I wouldn't do it in cash. Next game, we have Cincinnati Reds and Boston Red Sox. We have Ben Lively and Brian Bello. Lively was decent his last time out, but I think it was like one of those games in Wrigley Field where the wind was blowing in to kind of eye that. Uh, and Bello has really come into great form, and I think he's my favorite cheap pitcher, 7K or under. So I'll definitely be playing him. This game has a 10 total, and again, I think Cincinnati's a little bit too high here with the 4.21. Uh, I'm in the Boston bullpen, but Cincinnati can hit, but they just 
it's in Fenway Park, but the wind's blowing in here. It's only 64 degrees. So I I don't really think that they're going to be able to put up five runs. So that might be a, a nice little parlay we're starting here. The Milwaukee Brewers under, the Cincinnati Reds under. Um, so Lively is a no for me. And the fade list, Bellow, I really like. Cincinnati bats, um, they're going to go on the 150 max. I don't really like them here. And Boston bats, I really like. If Devers is in the lineup, um, that makes it even better. They'd probably be a little bit higher up. I think they got 5.79 total, but if Devers is not in the lineup, they'll probably still have over five, but it's just pretty much all lefties here. So Verdugo, Yoshida, and Skip Turner, uh, Devers is in, Duran, Kiki Hernandez, no. Cassis is really cheap at first base at 2.7. Veldez, the other rookie at second base, is really cheap. And Reese McGuire, a catcher, like there's – Probably only going to be two righties in the lineup in Turner and Hernandez. Everybody else, I think, is in play here. Philadelphia and the New York Mets, uh, wind blowing in, city field, 66 degrees, 10 miles per hour. So this is definitely a decent hitting uh, environment. But Ranger Suarez, I just, uh, he's coming back from injury. He had some flashes of brilliance, but nothing really. You got a lefty against a lot of right handed power in this Mets lineup, even though it's not a hitting park and even though the wind's blowing in. I, I still think he's a complete fade here. Senga on the other side has improved recently. I mean, Philly's a great lineup here to go up against. So I think in the high range at 9-7 with so many other options, he'd be GPP only. Uh, but, you know, he does have some electric ghosts, you know, splitter, whatever that pitches that he throws that, uh, you know, a lot of them haven't seen yet. So, you know, he could be definitely be a, a decent play in the high end if he pays off. But, you know, if he struggles, then, you know, that's why it's a GPP and not a cash play here. Philly bats, uh, you're pretty much looking at, you know, a GPP and the Mets, the same thing here. The Mets uh, just take the righties here to like Alvarez, the catcher, if he's still banging in the second spot, Lindor, um, Alonso, uh, Vientos really is, he's hitting like a buck 77 or something, but he's a high um, prospect. If he's, uh, filling in for McNeil, who is potentially injured, uh, definitely somebody at three one to try. So I l- love the um, right-handed bats here for and higher in the order. I mean, Fam and kind of like Fan have a decent game the other night when they were they were playing somebody and they were just beating up on him. Maybe it was Colorado, but I just. I really don't like the lower half of this order. I, I really want to stick to probably, you know, the Alvarez, Lindor, um, Alonzo, maybe some Viento and Marte for that. Uh, Philly bats, like I said, just um, probably the lefties here. So Harper as a Schwarber, maybe as some one-offs. I don't know if I were going to full stack them. We continue on with the Battle of Missouri with the Kansas City Royals and uh, St. Louis Cardinals. You have Zach Greinke and Miles Mikolas. Greinke is a no for me. He just has no – I mean, he's still pitching out there, but he's just like probably pitching – throwing like 84-mile-hour fastballs, and he just doesn't get a lot of strikeouts, and he's like more pitch-to-contact guy. Uh, Miles Mikolas, um, he's had some solid outings here, and even though Kansas City has put up some runs here and there – uh, he's definitely in play in the the mid range, probably about the like eleventh or twelfth pitcher in the rankings today. But if you need some salary savings and you end up on him, like you pick your SP one, you pick your stacks, you pick your fill ins, and then you pick your SP two last. Like I don't think he's like the worst one that you could throw out there. So if you land on him at seven seven, then go for it. Uh, Kansas City. Bats, um, I think, you know, are just leverage. So I think Mikolos will have some ownership based on his current form. And St. Louis is probably my third favorite stack coming in at 5.28 total here. Um, Zenke's been kind of reverse splits too. So lefties, righties, whoever. I mean, Gorman's been really solid here at second or third base eligible. He's almost up to 5K, so that's getting pretty expensive. The Donovan can kind of um, balance that too if you play him in your lineup at 2.8. You know, Goldsmith's been hitting well. Contreras, the catcher, has been okay here and there. So even Burlington down like lower in the lineup at 2-3 if he's in there. So there's there's 
a lot of ways to make this work and get a decent pitching in if you take St. Louis as your primary stack today with some of the value um, stacks you can throw in there. Like I said, Kansas City, not super interested on, on this slate. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays and Chicago Cubs. The wind's blowing in again, eight miles per hour, 69 degrees in Chicago. Shane McClanahan has the second highest strikeout rate on the slate and up against uh, a Cubs team. It, it's just the highest price pitcher. Hard to get to if you want to try to get a Dodger, Atlanta, St. Louis, um, Toronto, Boston stack in these top stacks. But it is, you know, possible more on DK than on FanDuel, where you can really pay down on SP2. Uh, so I think he's definitely in play and probably maybe the top cash pitcher on the slate if you can get to him. Uh, Kyle Hendricks on the other side, not interested in too much. I mean, you can keep him in the cheap category, but Tampa Bay is just such a powerful offense day in and day out. It seems like they're almost matchup proof. So I have him in the GPP section just because I like some of the other matchups better and the wind is blowing in here. But, you know, they just... They have a 4.38 total. So you have like the five teams with the five totals in Baltimore and the White Sox just have really great matchups against questionable pitchers. And then Tampa Bay would probably fall in there ahead of um, the New York uh, Philadelphia game. Cubs not interested in just in 150 max if you're playing um, mass multi entering for the, the game or for the, your slates here today. Minnesota and Houston, you got Joe Ryan and Brandon Biak. Uh, Joe Ryan is a really solid pitcher. Also, I think he's a nice pivot off of McClanahan to save you like $300 or not much of a savings. Houston, like Altuve's back. I think he had a grand slam. He looks really good. So this lineup's getting healthier and, and better, but they have some times where they have um, laid some eggs. They have a 3.87 total here. If you're um, going on the parlay and you think the 3.87 total against Joe Ryan is too low, because the Minnesota bullpen's not like anything elite here, then maybe bet the over on that. So now, you know, keeping track of our, our betting parlay here, we're up to like three games that we could potentially throw in there. So, you know, I think I'll play a little bit of Ryan, but I think I like McClanahan and some of the other guys in the high end a little bit better here. Belak, not interested in, um, not horrible pitcher, but uh, it's just in the context of the slate, um, not one of the cheap guys I'm looking at. And I think I really like some of these um, Minnesota twins here against them, especially because they're so cheap and make some of your other higher stacks work. Like Julian, if he's batting second here at two seven, uh, Krilov um, had like four or five hits the other day too at three two. And this Royce Lewis is a guy that might have come up with Seattle. Maybe it was a twin all along. I can't remember. But this guy it was a huge young prospect and then had a devastating injury. And now he's fighting it back. He had a home run last um yesterday when he, he got the start. He's 2K. He's minimum price on both uh, sites. I will be playing a ton of him in a weak shortstop position here today. In most of the stacks, like Dodgers, like really don't have a shortstop that you want to play there. Atlanta really don't have a shortstop that you want to throw in there now that Swanson moved on. St. Louis, I know there's a couple guys there. Boston, like, really doesn't have a shortstop. Toronto does. Um, you know, it, even, like, in a Baltimore stack, like, you, there's, like, Mateo or so, okay, but this guy's, like, 2K. So I will be playing Royce Lewis in almost, probably not every lineup, but in a lot of my lineups today. Probably, maybe I'll even put him on the cover of the video. To believe in him that much and we're gonna be like who is this guy uh astros again i think they're just gonna be a leverage stack here against ryan um could they get to him could they have a great game could they put up like eight or nine runs possibly but the prices you're paying for them i would rather pay up for the other five top stacks over them i, I just don't think this is the day to try to get cute and, and play an astro stack but if you're mass multi-entering then by all means you know at least have one lineup exposure to them angels and white Sox. highly anderson giolito anderson it's not a horrible pitcher but again on this slate with 26 options i'm not or actually 27 because i think there's two pitchers going for uh, san francisco i think that they're having an opener situation still tyler anderson is just not probably in the top 20 here or even in the top 15 so no thank you there giolito i think you know in the top range is is decent with a little savings uh, Angels have struggled at times. Yes, they have a super powerful lineup, but I've been talking in these videos over and over about these Jekyll and Hyde 
offensive. Seattle's like that. St. Louis is like that. Uh, the Angels are like that. There's even sometimes the Yankees are like that. They'll put up runs and then sometimes they'll lay absolute eggs. So uh, I think Giolito, you can take some chances on at, at 9 2. If you want to get a little bit different, save a little money in GPPs, I wouldn't play them in cash. Uh, Angels, again, are just on 150 matches because they're so expensive and so hard to stack. It's not really a great, um, and it's another Chicago ballpark where the wind's blowing in, and that like sometimes favors pitching over hitting. Uh, the White Sox on the other side against Anderson, I really like as another cheap stack or it's like my second favorite gpp stack here they have a 4.61 total here uh, so give me the righties give me anderson give me hemin as batting second at like 3.2 roberts a little expensive four six but if you can get up to him mancada a little bit expensive here vaughn you know if you want to sacrifice first base at three four rondell if you want to pay up a catcher i don't think i i'd, I'd probably like take alvarez or some other people over him but Berger at third base here at, at three three a lot of power especially against left-handed uh, hitters clint frazier has been decent uh when he was with the yankee against left-handed pitching he's only two one so Lots of ways on um, this White Sox team really can help you make a lot of your high end stacks and high end pitchers um, balance out the rest of your lineup. So keep an eye on them. Next up, we have New York Yankees and Seattle Mariners, Cortez and Gilbert. Uh, Cortez projects really well in this one. Seattle's just been really struggling recently, but they still do have some right handed power. But Julio Rodriguez has been slumping. Uh, but people say that things are pointing to him turning things around. Maybe this is a game against the lefty. We've seen Cortez be really good. We've seen Cortez be really bad. I think he's kind of like the same factor of Kikuchi. I like Kikuchi's matchup a lot better. So I, I put Cortez under him, but a little bit higher than Mikolo. So he's in play here. And I think, you know, people look at the price on him. Maybe he was a 10K pitcher and maybe take him as their SP2 because they think they're getting a, a discount and know that Seattle only has a 3.71 total. Maybe that's another one. This one's a little bit more risklier, but to add to the parlay, take the over on Seattle as with Houston, and we're taking the under on Milwaukee. And who is the other game that we said on that one? On Milwaukee and Cincinnati. Uh, Bat-wise, I think the Yankees are number one leverage check against Logan Gilbert. I think Logan Gilbert will be very, very popular. I know he's put another pitch in his mix, and he has the highest strikeout rate on the um, slate here. But I like McClanahan, Gallon, and Ryan better than him. But he, he does give you a nice savings at 10-2 over these, some of these 11K guys. So um, definitely in play potentially. The Yankees only have a 3.29 total. Again, they're, they're starting to get healthier. The judge had two home runs yesterday. So, I mean, he can turn on at any time. I, I think even like Calhoun had a home run. So some of these uh, guys like Bowers, like these cheaper guys might be able to um, get some hits. It seems like Volpe's really faded away now. He's like hitting down nines. But I think if you see a lefty, then I think he maybe will move to the top. So, and I think Rizzo will be back in after having neck soreness after like it was a weird play at first base or something. So just check the lineup, make sure he's in there. Um, but again, again, Yankees would just be a, a leverage stack, probably like the most leverage stack on the slate. Cause I think Gilbert will have some solid ownership and then Seattle, same thing, leverage against Cortez. But again, I just picked the righties here. So I probably wouldn't go full stack. I'd go France Rodriguez clinic, lefty and lefties fine Suarez. And then um, Riley, Tiasco Hernandez has had a history of hitting lefties well. It just hasn't been recently. So, and then even Caballero um, has been cheap. If you want to do a wraparound stack, skip, skip over Crawford and go like Caballero, France, J Rod, Clinic, Suarez. I mean, that definitely works. Colorado Rockies and Arizona Diamondbacks. Kyle Freeland is Zach Galen. Freeland is a decent pitcher outside of Coors, but I really don't want him a ton of him here might take some shots and GPP is some leverage, but I think Zach Allen is just going to absolutely shut down these Rockies. And I think that the right-handed it's going to be an, almost an all right-handed lineup, even with a uh, Corbin Carroll, the lefty here might um, come out and, and be fine because Colorado's bullpen behind Freeland is absolute garbage. Probably one of the second, probably the ace are the worst and Colorado could be like maybe the second worst. Um, so definitely uh not playing Colorado bats not playing a ton of Freeland 
Maybe I'll sprinkle them in a little bit. It just is leverage and some um, YOLO GPPs that I have. But uh, Arizona, I definitely want the bats here. Give me the righties. Give me like Marte Rivera. This is really cheap at 2-9. Uh, you'll just have to pick your outfielder here. Um, I, I definitely want Walker. Not sure if I'm going to – I'd rather play Rivera savings over Longoria. Um Carroll's fine to play, and then you'll have to see who gets the call, either Gritchick or, or Guriel for the other righty. Um, Marrera as a catcher on DK is not bad at 3-2. Uh, I'm okay with that in your stack. I um, probably would avoid Ahmad. And Jake McCarthy just really hasn't been hitting, especially lefty on lefty. He's just more of a stolen base guy if he can get on, but that's a key question if he can get on. Braves and athletics and so wind blowing out at 10 miles per hour here in Oakland, which is a hitting park. So it helps a little bit or no, it's a pitching park. So it hit, helps a little bit. Uh, Elder should be pretty, pretty, pretty popular here. He comes in at nine, three, put him in the medium range. I know that like he's priced around Senga and Giolito, but uh, I just really wanted to see, to see his name at the top because I, I think pretty highly of him against these A's here. Um, definitely, you know, he's, Probably not going to have the upside that McClanahan, Gallon, Ryan, and Gilbert have, but I think he'll be solid enough in a great matchup here to pay off if you want to start. If you just want to skip the high range and start with your SP1 with him in the medium range so you can get some of the higher end bat stacks in, then that's perfectly fine build for me. JP Spears on the other side is probably Oakland's best pitcher here, but I'm not taking him against the Braves after I saw what they did to Philadelphia. Now, they were kind of disappointing yesterday. I think they only put two up run, two runs and gave up seven to Oakland. But I think that was an outlier. I think that the Braves will be fine and they'll bounce back here and put up a lot of runs. So they're my second favorite stack on the slate here against the lefty. Um, I'll even take Olsen lefty and lefty because after they get through beat up Spears after a couple innings and the bullpen comes in, then he'll have the splits matchup and no problem. So don't fade Olsen just because it's a lefty lefty starting pitcher. And Oakland, again, would just probably be in 150 max. I think Elder and the bullpen will be fine. And I don't think the A's are going to score a ton of runs in this one. Pittsburgh and San Francisco. San Francisco went off yesterday on Pittsburgh. They put up a football score as like the 49ers are playing. Uh, Oviedo is a decent pitcher, but still a fade here in this situation just because San Francisco is trying to get uh, healthy here and can mix and match so many people with you. Uh, looks like Burbita is going to be the opener at 8 6, which is absolute no. If he's only going to go a couple innings at 8 6, no way. If he's going to go for the full game against Pittsburgh, and I don't know, an 8 6 in this, and when you have 26, 27 pitchers to pick from, not somebody that I'm interested in. Manea maybe piques my interest in the lower range just because he did go out in three innings like a couple games ago and put up 26. So, and, and Pittsburgh has cooled off since like they were hitting super well in the beginning of the season. It's only 57 degrees out there. Like winds blowing out low miles per hour in San Francisco, that just doesn't really, um, make the ball fly out like it does in Coors or Fenway or Yankee Stadium or Wrigley Field or where the White Sox play. So not too concerned about that. So pitching-wise, again, Mane is the only one I might consider in, like, extreme v GPPs for, like, a, a cheap one. Not interested in the opener for San Francisco or Oviedo. And bat-wise, Pittsburgh in the cheap stack, if you think that the righties can get to Mane, but, you know, they're – even though like their leadoff guy is like two one, it's lefty on on lefty with Mane if he's going to be out there and Shawinsky also. So if Rubrita is going to be out there for a long period of time, Mane is not coming in after him, or they announce somebody else is pitching, then maybe these lefties would be better for me. But I really love the San Francisco side of this. Uh, Wade Yastrzemski, JD Davis is a reverse splits um, hitter, so he hits righties better than lefties. Conforto, uh, Sabo, who's a rookie that I've absolutely loved. Um, and uh, Patrick Bailey has been super solid as a catcher, and he's only two threes. He's got power and is hitting the ball really well also. So, you know, somebody to keep in mind for a punt catcher at two, three, great price there. Even, even stacks well with the rest of the San Francisco guys to fill in to try to get the Dodgers, and Atlanta, St. Louis, Boston, Toronto in, in your stacks. Final game is Washington and the Dodgers. Jake Irvin and Tony Gonsolin. Jake Irvin is a no. Uh, Dodgers have a six total against him, so no. Uh, Gonsolin doesn't really go deep in the games. This isn't like a huge 
hey guy or anything, but this Washington team, I think, you know, he's someone to consider in the cheap range at 8K. I'd pro- I, like, I like Elder a lot better. I'd probably in GPPs where I play Kikuchi or Cortez. I think Mikolos has a little bit more floor, um, can probably go deeper into games, but doesn't have like the K upside that Gonsolin does. So I don't know. He, he's out there. He's, um, Available probably will get you anywhere from 14 to 17 DK points. If that's enough for you at 8K, then that's fine. If you want to start your lineup like Elder Gosselin in, in cash and then load up on the bats, then I'm okay with that also. I, I don't think he's really a fan to play unless you build a great bat lineup and that he's the only guy left um, in that kind of range that you have left for pitching, then go ahead and play him there in your GPP. Washington, not interested at all. 150 max only if you're mass multi-entering and the Dodgers top stack on the slate. So I know that was a long breakdown, a lot of games here. So let's get you to the lineups to get you on your way for your day so like i said i'm taking mcclanahan but this mcclanahan could be gallon it could be ryan it could be gilbert whoever you want to start with elder up there my sp2 i'm probably taking uh, bello and cash probably taking the two three uh catcher from san francisco and then freeman bets lewis lock him in there 2k guy at shortstop jd martinez i hated him all last year but he has actually been hitting really well recently so put him there Conforto or your Shemsky there, and then whatever outfielder you want left there, if you want to um, use both of them, I think it works in the lineup. FanDuel, I got to go Bellow and Cash. I can't get up to McClanahan and get the Dodgers in. So Freeman, Betts, J.D. Martino, same thing, Conforto, yes, Shremsky. I like on FanDuel that you can play two first basemen, so Wade Jr. is definitely a priority for me there. If for some reason Freeman sits, and I want Wade Jr. and DK in my first base slot. For GPP, uh, give me Gallon. Oh, sorry. In cash wise, also, it can also be Freeman, can be Olsen, Betts can be Elby's. Um, third base can be Riley. He's uh, pretty decently priced. I think he's the same as JD, who um, I said was a great third baseman from the San Francisco that you could put in your lineup there. And then J.D. Martinez um, can definitely be Acuna. You might need to drop down and play some of the White Sox instead of the San Francisco Bats to make that one work. Um, FanDuel is a little easier. You can pretty much get a full Giant stack in there with a full Braves stack. Same same switches there. So Freeman becomes Olsen. Betts becomes Albies. J.D. Martinez becomes Acuna. And then a third base it becomes Riley. GPP, give me Gallon here, and I'm going to take either. I'm probably going to take Kikuchi here. I, I really think that he's going to shut down this left-handed, um, struggling Milwaukee lineup. So um, that's where I'm going to go. So give me the Arizona's Moreno, Walker, Marte, and then you can fill in with whatever Minnesota or Arizona guys you want here. I'll probably take Lewis again here at, at um, shortstop. And then whatever Arizona outfielder, if you can get up to Carroll, that's great. Uh, Guriel, Grichik um, is, is fine too. Pav Smith, if he's in even lefty and lefty, because like I said, once they get past um, the uh, first pitcher, the bullpen's horrible after that. So, um, you know, he'll definitely have the splits advantage going on there, especially if he's leading off and that he's usually a pretty great value there. And then Minnesota outfielder probably can't get up the Buxton, but you're going to look at um, Gallo or Crillo, like somebody like that, just to fill in your, your lineup. So it's pretty much Arizona, Minnesota is where I'm going with that with Kikuchi as my SP2. And then finally on FanDuel, McClanahan, I'm going to, I can get up the pitcher here if I stack the White Sox and Arizona. So Walker, Marte, Tim Anderson, I'm focusing on the righties here for the White Sox, Roberts Jr., um, Berger third base if you want to go that way if you don't want to take an Arizona guy Guriel or Grichik um, however you want to fill it out if you need a little bit more to get up to somebody else in, in your lineup here then like I said Gail and Roberts Gilbert all are in play as your SP um, one here even in the, the GPP section so lots of things going on here so thank you for bearing with me watching this video hopefully it helped you uh sort through this giant giant slate it's kind of nice to have a big one but i think you know i've got a clear picture of where i want to go with pitching and and hitting and how i can make it all happen so it's kind of nice how it all balances out with all the options we have so if you have any questions put them in the chat below hit me up at mega 31 on twitter if you want more information on fsi dfs to get into our discord to see what our final cores are like the cores that we give you for like the tiers for all the shows 
showdowns for anything else, then um, it's in the description of the video how you can sign up for that. And if these videos help you, then please like, subscribe to our channel so you know when the videos are coming out and share with your friends, which everybody's doing an awesome job because we continue to grow in viewership and in um, subscriptions little by little every single day. So everybody that keeps on watching, thank you so much. Everybody who's shared with somebody else, thank you so much. And hopefully we've helped you make some money and stay in the game and uh, be successful at DSS Fantasy Baseball. So it's been my pleasure to break down the slate for you. I'm Ruler 31 Good luck in your contests. Hope you have a great Tuesday. You know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.